of time thinking about himself and had come to the conclusion that he was definitely not self-absorbed. He searched for Martin Kenneth Banks. Usually a word search on a simple text file took no time at all. Plain text is easy for a computer to work with due to the sheer size of the file. Though, Martin's search for himself took nearly 10 minutes and finally found his name lodged toward the back of the file. He spent over an hour peering at the data and eventually was able to tease out some recognisable information. Whoever had made this file knew a lot about him. He was irritated to find his height was wrong. It wasn't labelled height, it was just the number. But it was unmistakably 5 feet 11 inches it was wrong. In that while that might be how tall Martin was if he went to the trouble of measuring him. He'd been put in 6 feet 2 inches on every form he'd filled out since high school. He edited the number and hit save. He spent, he spent a few moments looking around at various numbers in the file, then got up to go to the bathroom. Martin stretched his arms, stood up quickly, and felt a terrible discomfort in his groin. It was like someone had grabbed the waistband of his jeans and pulled upward. They were his favourite jeans. They'd always been a little tight. He liked pants that consistently reminded you that you were wearing pants, but they never caused him anything like this sort of discomfort. He looked down at his waist. His belt was right where it usually sat, but the inseam of the jeans were definitely right and higher than usual. Also, now that he looked, the hems were slightly higher on his ankles than he remembered. Weird, he thought as he pulled his pants down a bit and walked into the bathroom while absently taking a leak. He, he glanced over at the mirrored front of the medicine cabinet. He saw dust building up on top of the medicine cabinet and thought that he should really clean up there. He didn't dust that spot often because he couldn't see up there. He started at, he stared at the dust, letting that thought sink in until he realised his aim had drifted and he was urinating on the wall. The whole time he was cleaning, the wall behind the toilet, he was laughing at himself. When he was a kid, occasionally he would have to leave the house at night to fetch something from the car for his parents. He would always think about how weird it would be if some horrible monster was chasing him. And by the time he returned to the safety of the house, he would be in a dead sprint with his stomach tied in knots. Then he would laugh because it was ridiculous to think that a monster would be chasing him. His front yard on a well-lit street in the shops. This, he knew, was no different. His pants rolled up. He probably meant he was gaining weight. Not a good thing, but nothing to freak out about. And a medicine cabinet had probably settled a bit, or one of its support screws had torn free of the drywall. Or maybe he was imagining the whole thing, sitting around all night in a dark apartment with a TV and the computer screens. Providing all the ambient light is bound to affect your perception after a while. When the wall was as clean as it was going to get, he turned his attention to the medicine cabinet. It was still fastened firmly to the wall and didn't appear to move. He could still see the dust covered top and furthermore, he was pretty sure he had always been able to look himself in the eye when he looked at the cabinet's mirrored front. He remembered the mirror cutting him off about halfway through his eyebrows. He was looking in the mirror now, and all he could see was his nose. And that's all he could see, was just his nose, nothing else. How very strange, how very strange indeed.